Let go of the past and manifest the reality you desire. It's time to expand your consciousness and create a new enlightened transformational you by raising your vibrational frequency. We will talk about ETs, light ships, the ascending human, our ascending planet, visitations, and first conscious contact upon our new fifth dimensional Earth. Welcome to Universal Unity, New Earth Consciousness. It's time to activate a better you by embracing the white light of Source. Of Source. Of Source. Of Source. Now your host and Universal Guide, Joanna L. Ross. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Joanna from Universal Unity. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I am back. So happy and so excited to be back. Back with some new energy, back with some new vibrations. And I'm really excited to kick it off today. Today is a master number 22. Welcome back to radio that is all about ascension, all about human potential, all about the frequencies that we experience in any circumstance, any situation, in any frequency that we allow ourselves to swim within and dance within we are creating something new today brand new and we're going to talk about everything that that um that intro allowed us to um get excited about light ships divine gaia energy from uh, my sacred peru journey i'm so excited to bring some some musings forward some experiences forward to dance and entangle with you so that we can create and co-create within this beautiful soul tribe this beautiful soul family of, of gathering once again and just know that in the etheric frequencies in the etheric fields we have been gathering um even though i have been off for the last three weeks um but we have been gathering and doing our work and creating beautiful um grids and potentialities so just know that we're always connected we're always entangled and we're always one so thank you and welcome back at the bottom of the second hour we will be creating um some beautiful communion time with one another if you so desire for those who so desire to connect and tune in with us um, you can call in live, 702-425-9230 is the case you are live call-in number. Or you can um, tweet your questions as well as um, listen live, or you can email them to Tina in whatever social platform that you are comfortable with. So feel free to call and connect and ask me any questions you so desire about my beautiful Peru excursion. You will see pictures. I've posted very few. <laughs> I've, I think I took a couple hundred um, while I was there. I'm not sure how many, but my phone I had to keep deleting the playlists from my music folders because I was taking so many pictures. Um, and so I've got so many pictures to kind of put together, but I'm being very, um, very, um, um, I'm very being very purposeful about what pictures I'm putting forward um, because many of the experiences I had were very sacred and very special and um, I'd like to keep them very sacred and special for me uh, and so um, I will be sharing some but not all um, because some of them uh, we were creating beautiful sacred ceremony and beautiful sacred rituals and um, intent about the land and they were very special and, and for me um, that's those are things that um, we keep within the divine families of energy and we don't necessarily put those out for um, you know, commercial use or video use or anything like that. And that's why most of my events that I will be putting on and wherever I travel about the world, um, they won't be videotaped or, or recorded in that way because I feel very um, purposeful with that intent to go forward as sacred communion in that way for those that gather um, with these intentions to do so. And so um, that's just the intent I walk forward with. So I will put out some pictures. I will put out some um, beautiful musings of what I've experienced. And we're going to talk about a few today. Um, but first, we wanted to get to so many reminders. And because it's been a very busy summer and we're going to be um, we're going to be going to Hawaii next month in July and then to Japan in August. So we've got some more beautiful, lovely Gaia frequencies to experience. And I'm really, really excited because of what I experienced in Peru and how I was activated and awoken in a certain way that brought me to a deeper level of self-appreciation and um, self-honor for who we are as universal beings. I understood myself as a universal being in a much grander way than I ever have which I had no idea what was about to unfold. Um, and we'll go into the Peru um, experiences in a bit, but I'm just getting so excited. We're going to go through the reminders. <clears throat> 
so that we can get those out of the way because I know that many are listening and, and want to know what's happening. Um, we've created a brand new class and this is going to be uh, starting July 1st and it's going to be Sacred Temple Priest and Priestess Within and Awakening the Sacred Temple Shamanic um, Vibrations of All That You Are and that you've held in many lifetimes and it's going to be a really playful class held within our Sacred Temple teachings and it's going to be a once a month class 60 minutes and we're really going to come forward in a very playful and exuberant way <clears throat> to continue um, you know building upon these beautiful lovely emanations of um, all we're being activated all we're being offered and all that we're moving through in our multi-dimensional lives because what we teach here at Universal Unity and Universal uh, Light Wisdom and Healing Centers is 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 truly all about the simplicity of ascension, the simplicity of who we are as multidimensional beings of Christed essence, of God essence, and understanding the four lower bodies, the divine inner temple, and all that we've talked about. But we're going to be expanding it and truly beginning to play. Because we catalyze new frequency realities, we catalyze new experiences, we catalyze new um, beautiful divine um, earthly realities through our sacred play, through our sacred excitement, through our self-embrace and self-honor and all those things we've talked about. So this class is specific for those people who who really feel, and this is just something I've experienced in my own personal journey, is really to have an outlet where we can just come and be totally free with whatever intuitively comes to our mind, whether it be singing and dancing and moving and banging on a drum, whatever it may be, to spark those um, DNA activations and those DNA remembrances of our shamanic lifetimes, of our priest and priestesshood lifetimes within the temples of that, all that we've gathered within. And so this class will really be an hour of play. We're going to create a different topic once a month, and that once a month topic will be um, will be free reign for for all those who so desire to come forward and just play. And so that will be a class where you can come forward and muse about your intuitions and and create sacred dialogue in the circle sharing and have um, all of those playful moments of who you are transitioning into as your greater soul self. Because we've all known this beautiful path of ascension and how we're transitioning into an illuminated galactic human. But there's so many of us that are here for truly specific reasons, truly specific purposes in healing, um, be it, whether it be a plant master, whether it be a sound master or a light master, whatever it is that your skills and excitements are, those will be coming forward in these sacred play times. And so if that's what you move in with your intent and your perspective. And so we're going to be offering this really playful class because I've always felt that I've always had these desires to come forward and just sing and just move and just dance and really be playful. And I've allowed those awakenings to truly come to the forefront from Peru. And we've offered it in just our last solstice class that we had last week. And I was very lovingly embraced by the new frequencies that I was offering and the, the teams and the beings that gathered in that sacred solstice embrace and ceremony allowed me and they carried the space for me to create these new beautiful offerings that I've been playing with as a Christed healer and a Christed teacher. And so that will be more of what we will explore in that sacred temple class. So Tina does have the link up for that. But if you also want to go to our Facebook page, Universal Joanna, Universal Unity on Facebook, you will see the various links that I've put for um, many of the links that Tina's got up there. And the first one is the awakening of the sacred temple priestess and priest class. And that starts July 1st. And that will be from 2 to 3 in the afternoon um, uh, Mountain Standard Time on Ju July 1st. That will be that one. And then our September 3rd event with the Universal Oneness Alliance. It's a Victoria Day. Um, it's a Victoria event, and it's an all-day event. There will be three channels um, that include myself as well as um, Universal Energy speakers. Um, and we're going to offer our Universal Collaborations and all that we are exploring within our unity consciousness our unity oneness and how we each have unique perspectives coming forward um, and allowing ourselves to know that we're all entangled we're all threaded we're all one and truly those that are um, excited to gather in a beautiful garden we're going to be at the victoria horticulture garden and that's all day on september 3rd and so feel free to to go into um, the universal oneness.org website and there's a victoria event link as well as tina has the links there for you
And we also had a beautiful gathering in a soul family tribe um, with a new platform of learning with um, Carrie Murphy. She's a beautiful divine host of Straight Talk for the Soul. And she has a beautiful learning platform of many, many beautiful, talented light workers, healers, authors. And it's a master series that she puts together on of the moment ascension, of the moment um, enlightenment with beautiful light workers and healers that have been having many wonderful experiences about their own personal journeys as well as their own gifts that they're offering forward. And I was so lucky to be a part of the panel and I'm very grateful and very blessed to be a part of that. And we also have that link on our Facebook page because there is a beautiful special little offer in there for those that register for that free teleclass. Um, I think you can get the, the replay link is on there. It says Joanna replay. <coughs> And that link will allow you to kind of swim with us for that hour and a half or whatever, however long we were on there, to kind of swim and dive with some new frequencies and new energies, as well as being offered a special offer through um, Carrie's wonderful platform. And um, we hope to do more uh, master engagements in that way as we explore the multidimensional master of all that we are, which we're so excited to teach and come forward in new ways. And our last reminder is um, our beautiful <clears throat> experience in Japan and that we have for um, August 14th to the 29th. We'll be there for workshops and, um, and beautiful private healings and, and so on. And I will be exploring the land upon Mount Fuji on my days off. And we'll be doing more um, activations within the grids and the beautiful crystalline portals and activations that um, I'm just going to open to the divine source and whatever happens, whatever happens will unfold. So I trust that and I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> So feel free to join us because I do know that we do have um, many listeners and many participants and clients that are in the, um, the beautiful Asian territories from across our beautiful globe. Um, located anywhere so if you want to plan a holiday or a vacation and you want to create some beautiful love uh, within the divine gatherings that we always co-create together um, then that would be a beautiful fun event and the links are there and they're also on um, our website universalunity.ca as well as the Facebook and Tina's got it up there as well <coughs> So thank you. That's that's it for the beautiful reminders. But today, we, as we said earlier, we're working off of a beautiful, profound master number 22. So thank you for that vibration once again. And we're also still swimming within the new moon energies of um, the new moon is in cancer. And cancer is all about allowing us to uh, really transform ourselves through beautiful emotions, through beautiful memory of the emotional body, of the Akashic frequencies that we're remembering ourselves to be. Remember, as we create those healings, as we create the integrations of all that we are in the greater soul fragment, within the Akash, within the universal field of the Omni field of that we exist within. We're allowing ourselves to become fuller and more integrated into our divine soul self, our Christed self, our limited, unlimited, limitless soul self. And as we do so, we're awakening and remembering certain aspects of ourselves that may seem, and this is just speaking from myself, since coming through Peru, there was some really profound releases for me, but they haven't been um, as... Um, as um, dark and challenging, if you will, to move beyond. It was a much softer energy to move through because I truly felt my mastery and understanding exactly what I was moving through and why I was moving through it. And so it, would, it really allowed me to sense and step into my mastery and really own it and claim it. So that was really wonderful um, that Peru activated me in that way. In so many ways, I was activated in Peru. I mean, really. Um, I, you know, it, it would be hard to put into any one statement. Um, I know that I've had many lifetimes um, concurrently in Peru on the lands and the Andean mountains and the, the frequencies that I experienced. Um, and so it was a beautiful coming home, if you will, um, for me. And before we get into the Peru experiences and our ascension topics for today, which is creating as the God self and creating this beautiful garden of light through the God self that we are. And this is truly all that we talk about. And we, we've talked about many times how simplistic the, the idea and the concept and the work, inner workings of ascension truly is and how we can magnify our human experience into something that's truly illuminated and, and galactic and universal by understanding these three very key, very core concepts that we all move through, through our reflective work. And that is, who are we, what do we exist within, and what exists within us? As we reflect on those three key concepts and core topics, which is what all the masters had come forward to, to, to speak and teach us, to remind us of our remembrance of how vast we are, 
At any given time you do those reflections, we can then move into understanding who we are as multidimensional beings through the divine inner temple, remembering the four lower bodies that we've been so so intent on healing and, and, and refining the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the etheric, then we're allowing this whole entire beautiful spiraling of refinement into our mastery, into something that we can, we can understand now, and it makes sense, and it feels more of who we are. Because we're not negating any one part of us. We're not negating our physical body. We're not negating our emotional body. We're not negating the etheric or the mental. We're allowing all that we are as masters to come forward and play in new light. Play as the God self. To illuminate as our God self. To create beautiful gardens of light as the God essence that we are. The Christed essence. And once again, for those that are new at listening, when we say the Christed self, when we say the God self, when we talk about the masters, it transcends all religion. Because religion is a byproduct of the master teachings that have come forth from higher dimensional light frequencies. And it had very little to do with what we have defined and segregated and separated into what we have called as human form as a religion. Because we've put so many rules and we've put so many, um, so many aspects and limitations around what those master teachings were all about. And it's truly, really very simple. Truly looking into the reflection of all that you are in any one given moment, moment for moment for moment for moment, about how true, vast, wide, and profound you are, within as without, because you will change and modify and refine every moment, and you're going to expand and explore and express. As you do so, all that you are changes. So does the environment, so does the reality, so does the universe, so does the omnifield. And why this is such a, a beautiful and elegant dance. And we've said that right from day one, because that was the role and the passion that I'd come forward with. Because very little of what I found on the internet ever portrayed that beautiful, elegant dance of spirit. The beautiful, elegant dance of lightship engagement, of our celestial team engagement, of our beautiful divine Gaia engagement, which is what I experienced at a whole new level in Peru. With the beautiful spirited frequencies that are with me, co-creating at a master level. And so allowing ourselves to come awake and come alive in this way, dear ones, is why we are here. The master level, the new garden of light that we sow, creating as our God self. And before we move into these topics that we've just introduced ourselves to, we wanted to talk a little bit about Gaia and her sacred lands. Because this will allow everyone a greater conception, a greater idea of some of the experiences that we'll talk about and we'll move with. And how we can create as our God self in the oneness of all that we are with earth, land, universe, energy, mental, emotional, physical. For we are all this spiraling light fields of profound creation. In all that we are, in all the planetary realms that we exist upon, regardless of what star system, dear ones, and remember, we're taking definition out of all things. <laughs> we like to leave definition open because we allow ourselves to live as source. In any star system that we exist upon, in any planetary realm or any frequency that we exist upon, there are energetic frequencies and matrices and fields, and we can define it in any way we want, whether it be a portal, a vortex, or a chakra. Within this, we also have our physical body, as well as the physical planet, the body itself of Terra, of Gaia. Each existing within its own frequency field, each existing within its own vortices, each existing with its own soul blueprint and soul themes, that it chooses to come forward and offer and create, as well as receive and expand and explore within. Each and every one of us has this as well. We have our inner chakra systems, we have the divine inner temple that we speak of so very often that is so very key to tune into and balance and align with in every moment because you are a whole magnified multidimensional being. And if you forget any one part of you, whether it be your chakras or you forget the mental issue, the mental issues that crop up for you or you suppress them or repress them or ignore them, then we're allowing these imbalances to come in and take place, whether it be through illness, whether it be through um, uh, how we behave or our belief systems. So allowing yourself to come into a grander and wider perspective of how vast and grand you are and what you exist within, the beautiful planet of Gaia also has these specific frequency grids and matrices and, and locations on our planet that allow us to move through various experiences each and every person will experience something different because they've come here with different soul blueprints and soul themes. 
different divine timing, different roles that they play, different energies that they bring, different wisdoms and information, and so on and so on and so on. The list is infinite. Within my particular experience, there are themes and, and councils that I play within that have much to do with grids, that have much to do with portals, that have much to do with human expression of communication at a multidimensional level. There's many, many things that we're all entangled with, many councils and many themes, many excitements and passions, and it's very beautiful. It's a beautiful infinite soul webbing, if you will. Each and every one of us comes with this. Each and every one of us are sewn and threaded together in this way. Upon Gaia, there are many chakras that she has based on the stories that have been told in the various locations over time, if you will. As we are moving within new grids and new systems, if you will, because of the healing that we have done as a conscious collective, each and every one of us individually add to the collective of the whole of the human family. As we've moved through these healings, as we've expanded our consciousness, as we've healed and self-loved ourselves, we're also healing and loving those aspects within those storylines, if you will, held within the chakras of Pangaea. For remember, her chakras are no different than our chakras within our body. They each hold stories vibrationally of what has occurred on those locations and what those chakras tell, just as if all the chakras within us tell certain stories. The I am presence, the I am love presence, the I am communication presence, the I am the all presence. Whatever those chakras tell are no different than the stories that Gaia has held within her grid systems, the energy frequency stories that we are all individually here to heal. That's why we've come forward. <clears throat> we've come forward for our love for thy grand creator self, the God self, mother, father, God, all of creation. We've come forward for our love for humanity, although much of what we have been seen and what we've been shown in our reality tells us different, that we don't love one another, that we're separate and we really don't like one another at all. However, that's not why we've come forward. We have forgotten it, though. We're here to remind you. We have come forward in our remembrance of our love for our beautiful planet and how we exist and how we spiral within the beautiful gates of our galaxy, suspended in time and space to create whatever it is we so desire. Are you remembering, dear ones, why you came forward? And although each and every one of you exist in a different location vibrationally upon our planet, vibrationally within the dimensional frequencies, we're all co-creating this beautiful soup together, this beautiful divine garden of light. Each and every one of us exists on a different vibrational thread. We come forward in every moment in our manifestations in our daily life to refine our choice. What is it that I choose to refine so that I may continually align with the highest aspect of who I am in this now moment so that I may thread my evolutionary potential and excitement with my human family, with my galactic family, with my universal family, with divine mother, father, God, and all that is the omniverse, and so on and so forth. It's infinite. As you heal and move about in your readiness and in your own specific pacing and what it is that you do in every moment, thought, word, and deed, as you move about your path to a higher dimensional being of light, remember you are a master. We're speaking to you in this way. You allow yourself to manifest vibrational locations for you to move upon, to swim within, to dance within, and remember who you are at a grander aspect of who you are as a soul being that has been on this planet for eons in this now concurrent moment. And as you do so, you're allowing yourself the gifts that each of those portals and vortices and story timelines vibrationally that they offer to your vibrational field. And as I said, in any one given moment, if you return back to that spot where you were a year ago, it will be different entirely, even if it was yesterday. Because the vibrational frequencies within that one moment, within everything, has changed and shifted, and so have you. <clears throat> the understanding of who we are as a grand collective, as a planetary focus within a new galaxy, within a beautiful universal offering, and how these grids have shifted and changed for us was really exciting <clears throat> because not only are we allowing ourselves an expansive view about who we are and what we're creating within as the God self, as the garden of light that we sow, 
I allowed myself to go to this beautiful sacred place, understanding that there were energies and vibrations there, although I purposely did not read anything about what I was going into. I purposely didn't. I signed up for a beautiful journey, but I didn't purposely read day by day what was going to occur and what was going to unfold because I wanted the experience to be organic and natural. I didn't want to go with the interpretations of anyone else but the frequencies that I was experiencing. And this will allow you to see the grander aspect of what we're unfolding and threading for you, if you so desire. The sacred journey that each and every one of us take in every moment, dear lighted ones, is similar to the sacred events that you create or that you go upon or these trips that you may take. And how there's itineraries and there's agendas and there's outlines and there's, there's research and there's all these things, beautiful things that have been done that we create to go about these, these journeys. And we've just booked a, a trip for our family and we've done that same thing. We had our travel agent create this beautiful itinerary for us and create these excursions that we're going to go on. Although, again, I haven't, I haven't read any of it. I just trusted that everything was going to be put together. And so we're going there with the, with the, with the full heart open and say, okay, let's experience all that we're here to experience. I'm going to have source live through me, which is the infinite, the unexpected, the unimaginable, and just go. Allowing yourself to any one moment that your daily life is no different. What itinerary do you set for yourself and what what limitations do you set for yourself and what perceptions and, and research and management have you put on your day-to-day -day life <clears throat> will either allow you to have freedom in your liberation to explore all that you are or it will limit it because you're only working in that limited itinerary of what you've outlined for yourself, which is what humanity has been doing for eons. So what we're here to say, dear lighted ones, that with the current ascension energies, with the grid shif shifts and transformations since March, that we are swimming within a new, a new ocean of potential, a new garden of delight. And you as the God creator can go into this exploratory journey, this sacred journey, with no itinerary whatsoever. And you will be blessed and delighted every step of the way. You do not need to research, you do not need to put forward a day-by-day, step-by-step, moment-for-moment itinerary of what will unfold for you. Because they're limiting in every way what the divine is able to offer you, which is what the intent was when I went to Peru. There was a beautiful and lovely itinerary prepared, and I was very excited about whatever it was we were going to explore. I knew that there was just this inner ache that had to create I had to create with Peru energy I just had to there was something there and I went with that and the universe aligned for me with that beautiful soulful intent and it aligned the beautiful people to emerge with and the beautiful um, the beautiful journey that was arranged and all of the beautiful work and the hard work that went into it and I just went as a participant which is what each and every one of us are However, I, I took entirely out whatever the itinerary was and whatever other information was there and I fluidly moved into whatever the universe would offer me in any given moment because I wanted it to be that way. I, I wanted it to be exploratory and with the divine in partnership without any other information coming in to limit what I was there to experience. Do you see what we're saying, dear lighted ones? That in any given moment, you can choose your own itinerary of your own sacred journey, of your own sacred intent, of your own sacred definition of who you are. And in that, you can explore whatever it is that you choose to explore in any given moment and have the divine offer it to you and have that be okay. It's not micromanaged. It's not organized. It's not timed. It's not displayed. So you're allowing the all to live through you as the God creator that you are. You're living as your God creator. And there's no judgment on either way, on whatever way you choose, because it's always free will. And each and every experience is added to the whole, and it's required and necessary. But what we're saying that in this one experience of going to this, these, this one location, if you will, of Peru and the sacred lands that I traveled, I allowed myself to be totally open for whatever was going to unfold. And that portal of unlimited expectation, if you will, and intently opening my heart to the God self, I was able to experience some pretty profound and magical things that I still can't put into words. And it was truly magical and it was life altering. And I felt myself for the first time, and I haven't many times, but this time was a bit amplified and magnified, that in some of the locations that we took time and, and the beautiful group was just so 
um, respectful and, and adoring of our time with Gaia and our time in meditation and our sacred intent. That we were allowed ample time to sit and meditate in these beautiful places that we were exploring for the first time in this lifetime, if you will. And there were moments where I sat upon the land and it was just very beautiful for me specifically in my own unique story and how Gaia was flowing through me and speaking through me in my own unique way from the frequencies that I was co-creating in that God moment, in those God moments and the Gaia moments and which can't be predicted. It can't be planned out and it can't be, it can't be, (laughs) it's just something I wouldn't have expected. It's the unexpected and that's what the God self is creating all things in the most unexpected manner and have it live through you and letting go of all definition, letting go of all management and micromanagement or the expectations that we place on all things when schedules and times and restrictions and all of those things that we have allowed ourselves to be immersed in the human life because it's been our behavior, it's been our habitual patterning, the egoic patterning to be safe, to be cared for, to be to take care of finances and bills and all of these things and time and all of those things that we've managed ourselves to think were important. The constructs of our reality in these recent global shifts within the grids, within our divine sacred source offerings in every breath are different. And those constructs can be let go bit by bit by bit by bit if you so desire, if you so choose to live an expanded life of your divine God self. And allow all that may be to be the godly divine moment that you at your higher levels and all of the other frequencies that you exist upon and all the other councils that are there assisting you to have this magical journey to unfold in the beautiful divine synchronistic manner that it will, because it will. And that's allowing that beautiful surrender and the trust that we've often talked about. Because if you truly trust and fall in love with who you are as a divine creator, you trust that that very next step is the same Christed step. It's just going to unfold something beautiful for you because it's a new step. But you have that same open, beautiful God heart that you do step by step by step by step. And you allow creation to take care of itself. That's the divine open heart that you walk with, that surety, that knowingness to just flow in love. And allow all of creation to be one with you, because you are, because it is. And when we step upon these, these, these beautiful sacred lands, each and every aspect of those locations that have energetic information within them, they're all purposeful, unique, and different, and Christed in every way. It's the Christed consciousness, not only speaking through the grids of Gaia, through the heartbeat of Gaia, and why we ground with the heartbeat of Gaia in all of our teachings and all of our offerings as a soul tribe, but all of the information that's crystallized also within you because your crystalline field is interacting with Gaia's crystalline field that's brand new, pristine. The constructs are slipping away and many of you have been experiencing this. So if you find any of these experiences that you've had lately about time slipping away, about constructs slipping away or about your, your entanglement with land enhancing and being magnified, then please feel free to call in at the bottom of the second hour and share your loving experiences with us because this is what we're talking about. The world that we thought we lived within is changed dramatically. But how we perceive our everyday moment for moment life, if we're still carrying those same perceptions, then we're going to still perceive the same world. And I'll give you a personal example. We're, we've talked about many times that I'm, I'm doing this beautiful universal light wisdom and healing center um, with my kids. And we're going to be doing homeschooling, if you will. We call it homeschooling, but that's not what we're calling it. We're calling it light, light wisdom center. And the light wisdom center is us just moving synchronistically with energy and how the children feel motivated and excited to move in any, any one way about their excitements and their passions. And so we've been moving with these ideas and with these beautiful intentions and we've been fluidly just kind of falling into it. But then there's the old world um, restrictions, if you will, and and definitions that we've given ourselves that, well, I have to, I have to apply for this paperwork. I have a deadline of this to meet. I have a deadline of that to meet. How is that old world energy going to fit in with this new perception that I want? And this is what we've called And they're held within the DNA of all that we are. They're held within each and every individual soul constructs, if you will. Those are what we've called the reality imprints, the societal imprints of what we've created and co-created in our earthly lifetimes, in the denser reality that we've existed within. 
But at any given time, we can change that, especially now because we're being supported in every way, energetically and vibrationally and physically. We can step out of that old imprint and construct to say, well, that was in my perception of what I used to live within. The constructs to say, well, the government needs this deadline, I need to hand that paper in, I need to fill this out. <clears throat> and all of those constructs that we that we used to live within are just habitual patterning, just to stay safe. Well, if I don't have them registered, then they're not going to sign up for this provincial exam or that provincial, whatever it may be. We're just giving you these as examples. But those were the restrictions that I was holding in myself. And I was in, at any given time, I can move out of it and I can say, okay, well, why can't I just create whatever I want to create when the time is right? And why can't I create this new idea and perspective of how unlimited and how limitless this new frequency really is? And the constructs of this new reality I want to step and swim within might be a bit more flexible and more fluid. So at any given time, you can create those new paradigms of thought and perspectives about what the constructs of your reality really are and just let go of all constructs altogether if you so choose to really fly and soar and really be limitless. Just as if you were on a beautiful sacred trip in every moment and have it be undefined, have it be unplanned, have it be synchronistic and flowing with the divine source creator that you are. Why not? This is stepping outside of the old human paradigm of what we have always known, of what we have always been and behaved within. But now those who so desire can choose to step within their God self and say, well, I'm choosing new perspectives and they're much more, unlim they're much more unlimited. They're much more vast and wide and expansive and loving. So what you move within your everyday moment for moment reality will dictate what you experience. And we're allowing you to understand that much is slipping away very, very dramatically. And as the world changes, as the societal paradigms change and shift, and as the constructs change and shift and fall away and slip away, so too will you seamless find yourself in these new beautiful realities where they just flow and seamlessly move together. And you are exactly where you are when you're meant to be there, with whom you're meant to be with. That's the entire blessing and the gift of being the God self because life just works. It just flows. And that's what I found through this entire Peru experience is I went there with the intent for it to be completely open and the expectations were entirely dropped. There was just that inner urge that I just must go and I followed that urge. I followed that inner sensing and that tuition. But when I was upon the land, I allowed myself to be truly open and inviting of whatever may come forward. And on many of those spots and locations, I experienced collective energies from the land, from ancient times. I experienced beautiful Gaia energy. I experienced beautiful galactic and celestial energy beyond what I ever thought. Because I believe in my own sensing and my own intuition from the lifetimes that I'm sensing I've lived there. And from what I've seen, I, there was visions every, everywhere I looked. There was visions of celestial um, faces and images everywhere. Uh, you, you know, there was just everywhere in the clouds and the trees and the rocks. I mean, it was everywhere. I was so awake and alive to the images of, of energy. And it was allowing me to understand that many of these sacred places upon the earth, and we've talked about, they hold information about who we are as a grander universal being. They hold galactic information. They hold the star, star system and the star wisdom information as many of the temples have done. And we've had those off-world visitations to allow the evolution of any one tribe or any one collective into a heightened way of being. And those grids and those portals and those vortices hold that information. And when you're ready for it, you're going and you're moving about the land in your beautiful excitement and all you're being drawn by is your excitement, your intuitively following spirit. And you step foot upon the beautiful offerings of Gaia and the beautiful collective consciousness that offers things forward to you in any given moment. And you're being blessed in every new moment through the beautiful garden of light, which is what the omniverse is. Whether you're in the ocean swimming, whether you're in your beautiful herb garden, whether you're climbing a mountain, all are aspects of source and light and information and receiving and giving. And you can be open to it to be blessed with whatever it is you're going to be blessed with at any given moment. Which is exactly what I experienced in most days that I went out and I, 
I traveled with the intent to be fully open in my God self with Gaia, with creation. And so it was very magical. And we wanted to just give you that that reminder of how beautiful and how precious our beautiful planet is and how beautiful and precious the lifetimes that we have lived here. Because it allows us to see that we're, we're integrating the grander soul version of all that we are from all the lifetimes we've lived and all the tribes we've been existing upon in the now moment. To come forward and remember the wisdoms and insights and brilliance that we held in simplicity. And one thing that I took away from, from this one experience that I was, I was moving through, this one release and this one integration of all my grander aspects, this one profound lesson that I walked away with just in that one afternoon was the symbiotic relationship of all things that many of these tribes, these ancient tribes had held, that they had come forward with in their, in their beautiful um, energetic discussion with me, is that they understood that there was this this one um, ancient tribe and this one ancient tribe I was shown the four um, elder leaders if you will from the south the north and the west and the east and these elders would come and they would create ceremony these tribe these tribe elders from each division each tribe if you will and they would sit around the fire and they would create celebration and ceremony in such times as the solstice if you will and in these communions and in these gatherings although they had different perspectives of their community and their tribe, although they had different um, um, things that they had grown, things that they had learned. Perhaps one tribe had star council meetings from beings off world, and they would come together uh, in, a, in a ceremony of sharing, and they would share wisdoms, and they would share insights, and they would share materials, and they would share tools, and they would share. And it was a symbiotic relationship that these elders knew that they were acquired from one another, that they were gifting and receiving from one another in a very balanced and symbiotic way. Not only with one another, but with Gaia, which they held great reverence for, that we have forgotten through the eons. And how everything that was gifted and blessed, nothing more was taken than what was needed. And we have forgotten that as well, that we are rebalancing and healing. We're moving into a sense of simplicity within who we are as beings so that we only create what we need. We only take what we need. And then we gift and we share all that we are. For that creates the balance, which is what we've talked about in many times in moving within the understanding of who we are as a divine inner temple of light. And we're giving balance and nourishment and understanding and and care and sacred honor and, and desire for that balance of the whole multidimensional being that we are. But these tribes came forward to say, this is how we knew that we existed within our environment. We required this understanding of balance in a very refined way. And they created ceremony and reverence and and celebration when they were blessed with a bountiful crop, if you will, whatever it is that they grew. Whatever way they were blessed, whether it be the sacred waters that they held rituals around, whether it be the sacred land, whatever it was that they held ceremony and and sacred intent around and with, then there was these beautiful understandings of the symbiotic relationship that they held within it and that it was held within them. And it was taught at the earliest of age, which we are so excited to bring forward and create within the Universal Light Healing and Wisdom Centers is the understanding at all ages of how balanced we are as a divine being of light, the multidimensional vessel of all that we are. And we'll offer these interesting concepts forward so that from the earliest of age that we understand the fine balance that we are as beings of light and energy and physicality with our environment and with the multidimensional body of all that we are. So that we can create a new generation of enlightenment. We can create a new generation of reverence and and gratitude and respect and similitude and symbiosis with all things. And already the children know it and get it. They get that, that energy of balance. And they're brilliant way showers for us. And how we can begin these conversations in any moment to refine who we are as a collective, 
as an energy moving forward into these new grid spaces, into these new grid offerings and energetic alignments, so that we truly create as masters, as the God self. And we have the beautiful energetic experiences and Akashic healings in collectives and in tribes when we move about these sacred lands, which thus then expands who we are as universal beings of light and thus then allows us to communicate and open the portal of who we are to greater galactic and universal communication, as well as perhaps travel, perhaps first contact, perhaps healing land, perhaps creating new water systems, creating new um, air aeration systems. There's nothing that we cannot do in we, if we move in with the limitless intent of being our God self creator. We understand that the land will gift us with information and wisdom. The land will gift us with beautiful soil and water. But what are we giving in return? Are we allowing ourselves to be grounded with breath? Are we allowing ourselves to give that loving intent back to Gaia in that free-flowing infinity breath that we do when we ground? And we give all of our wisdoms and gifts back to her. We then emit with loving breath as we receive loving breath. Do you see what we're saying, dear ones? We're taking all that we are to a higher frequency. And it's beautiful and it's fluid and it's refined and it's godly. Because we're understanding with the finest thread of all that we are and the heartbeat that beats within us and the blood that pulsates through our veins as we activate new DNA, DNA that we are creating the essence of heightened frequencies in this entanglement, in this sewing, in this threading, in this swimming of divine light, the new garden of light that we create as we create through our God self, letting go of restriction, letting go of limitation, letting go of our expectations, letting go of what should and should not be and flow within the complete unlimited potentials of all that you are. That's the sovereignty the allowance and that's trusting that as you move within your God self, you're trusting that all things will just unfold perfectly and synchronistically and simultaneously as it should. That's the trust. That's a divine sacred trust of all that you are. And as we do that for ourselves, it also ripples to all those that we're entangled with. Because that's one big thing that I've learned as a mother of three, ch three children, all moving within different frequencies, all moving within different soul themes, all moving within different soul potentials. <clears throat> And as a mother, it, you know, it was my greatest, greatest excitement um, to be experiencing everything in my path with them. But that's not necessarily their sole path purpose is to experience everything with me. <laughs> and as a mother, that's what you that's what you hope and desire. But then you take a step back and you think, well, am I really allowing utter free will if I do so, if I act in that way and I create those restraints and those restrictions on them and the restrictions on myself, restrictions on creation? So we're allowing ourselves to truly step up into a higher vibration and see things from a new open-ended perspective, the God perspective, that they will experience their path as their souls have planned and they will have free will to tangle and dance or not. And the sovereign allowance is for me to allow that and be okay with it. And so that's part of my growth and my integration to understand who I am as a divine sovereign being and have that be balanced in two ways as we talked about that symbiotic relationship. I am giving and I'm receiving that sovereignty. I give sovereignty to allow all other paths to be respected and allowed in their own right. Whether you agree with it or not, that's that sovereign allowance that allows you to step up to that higher perspective just as the archangels and all the higher collectives have done with us. And my team's over the many, many years that they've come to me in many, many ways, in the times that I had forgotten who I was, there was that unconditional love and that sovereign allowance to allow all paths to be uniquely woven in their own unique way because it simultaneously heals all things with sovereign allowance and sovereign receiving of who you are as a divine sovereign being. You create your gifts. You express your gifts. You are who you are as a divine Christed being of light. That's your sovereignty. That's your birthright to claim. How you express that through the multidimensional body of all that you are, physical, mental, emotional, and so on and so forth, and it grows and expands every time we move up in our chakra systems and move up into our expansiveness in the universe. We're offered greater chakras. We're offered greater experience and so on and so forth. It's infinite. 
But we're now understanding the foundations of all that we are as beautiful divine God-like beings. And we're talking about foundations, which is the number four. Today it works out to a master number 22, and two and two is four. So we're talking about the genius in foundation, the east, the west, the north, and the south. The four foundations, <clears throat> earth, and air, and water, and fire. Do you see how we're threading all things, dear lighted ones? And it can be whatever in all things. New heightened foundations of all that we are. Threading ourselves in expansive and beautiful ways so that we can dance and play in expansive and beautiful ways and not limit ourselves in any way. And so there's been very profound lessons for me over the last couple of weeks. So I really appreciate um, the beautiful people of Peru and the ancient tribes and the collectives of Peru um, and the collective consciousness that allowed um, myself to entangle and dance with them and create the beautiful um, expansive threadings that we created over the past few weeks, as well as the beautiful soul beings on the trip, um, the beautiful soul tribe that we connected and entangled with, and the beautiful beings that organized and, and developed the beautiful trip. And we're going to be doing um, probably more trips in the future um, and to create beautiful entanglement in that way. And so I'm just very blessed and grateful for all unfoldings of divine source. Um, and to allow me an expanded point of view of our planet and of our creation of who I am within the grander whole. So I'm very blessed and thank you. So join us um, after the break. We've got <clears throat> in the second at the bottom of the second hour. I would love to take um, because we've been away f um, for the last three weeks, um, but we've connected in the etheric field. If there's anybody that wants to send in questions or send in um, texts or tweets. Um, or if you like the reminders or the links of anything that we've talked about in our first um, intro, then please feel free to call in or get your questions in, and Tina will get them um, to me. Or if you'd like to call in, the number again is 702-425-9230. And today we're talking about creating as the God Self and what beautiful garden of light that we create as we let go of all of the restrictions and all of the limitations and the perspectives and the confinements that we've given ourselves. And remember, there are no victims in any of this. We've, we've co-created these beautiful earthly lifetimes and they are really sacred and they're divine and they're a blessing because it's allowed us the masterful frequencies that we're experiencing right here and right now to say that, well, I can create a new perspective for myself. So thank you. And tune in after the break and we'll go farther into our career experiences. You've been listening to Universal Unity, New Earth Consciousness, with Joanna L. Ross. Live every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network to explore, empower, understand, inspire, and further connect with this higher state of consciousness. Please visit universalunity.ca. For more information on the host, Joanna L. Ross, Please visit her KCOR Digital Radio Network show page, Universal Unity, New Earth Consciousness. You're listening to the all-new KCOR, The Core, broadcasting from Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. Hell yeah, in a little place called Area 51. Let go of the past and manifest the reality you desire. It's time to expand your consciousness, consciousness and create a new enlightened transformational you by raising your vibrational frequency. We will talk about ETs, light ships, the ascending human, our ascending planet, visitations, and first conscious contact upon our new fifth dimensional Earth. Welcome to Universal Unity, New Earth Consciousness. It's time to activate a better you by embracing the white light of source. Of source. Of source. Of source. Now your host and universal guide, Joanna L. Ross. Hey 
Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in and um, connecting and entangling and dancing with us today in this beautiful garden of light. We are talking about the beautiful um, frequencies upon Gaia, what Gaia offers to us so lovingly, so graciously, um, so unconditionally in the various um, beautiful sacred locations upon our earth that I will be exploring more of, absolutely, any chance that I can and any chance that I'm offered and the opportunity to explore and dance with her and um, bring my children with me, then I will. <clears throat> And today we're talking about living and creating as the God self and how do we do that and why Why are the frequencies that we're swimming in feeling so different and sometimes often too when we go through big transitions especially galactic and planetary is which we've just gone through in March. We're, we're, we're integrating kind of the old world versions of who we thought we were into these new unlimited paradigms and that's new for us and so really to live as the God self it's allowing us to truly at any given moment that you find yourself restricting or limiting yourself or putting deadlines or constrictions on or anything that is confining in any way then allow yourself to step out and open up the divine sacred heart and allow the God source to come through you which is completely in an omnipotent way it's it's unexpected it's unimaginable it's unexplainable it's miraculous it's majestic it's liberating it's limitless it's unlimited it's magical i mean all of those beautiful limitless and codations of resonance is what the god self is and we really you know are changing the paradigms of our whole society of our whole reality as we do so we're changing the constructs of what we believed in, what we have defined as government, or what we have defined as banking, or what we have defined as education. Whatever it is that we've defined that has been constrictive and limiting, we can change and alter that moment for moment for moment, the more that each and every one of us step into an unlimited perspective of who we are, of who, what we exist within and what exists within us. Remember, ascension is very simple in simplistic terms is understanding and refining moment for moment for moment who you are what you exist within and what exists within you and the more unlimited and free and liberated you are then that's the reality that you'll define for yourself and create for yourself and so really move into it with fluidity and with with grand adventure and exploration and expressiveness to be your divine sovereign self and also, too, <clears throat> in balanced receipt of that, we were talking about symbiotic relationship, which is a mastery skill. It's a mastery attribute to allow that beautiful symbiosis to also be gifted to all others that you're entangled with. And it release the pressure and the stress of, you know, those coming along with you or those having to be with you or those in, in your definition and your perspective of what it should look like. Because the divine of you, the God aspect of you, the divine mother, father, God of creation, the hierarchies of the heavens and so on, the myriad of multidimensional galaxies that goes beyond our imagining, has it all figured out. And so the more restriction that we place on ourselves, the more oppressiveness and, and repressive frequencies that we place upon ourselves and how things should be and how things should look, we're limiting our reality experience in every way. How our reality and grids have shifted have really opened up and allowing us to do quite the opposite. But it's retraining ourselves. It's, it's called entrainment. Aligning yourself with a higher vibration moment for moment for moment. You entrain yourself and your reality, the all that you are existing as a beautiful Christed essence, into higher and higher refinements and higher and higher frequency fields, if you will, that you create, the light fields that you create through your perspectives and your beliefs about how vast and infinite you are refining those beautiful moment for moment manifestations that you create for yourself at the soul level to continually test yourself have you allowed yourself to give an, to be given away these restrictions are you ready to give away this restriction are you ready to let go of that definition are you ready to let go of this limitation are you ready to let go of this fear because really, the higher self of you wants you to slip into something so much more profound. And it's a beautiful garden of light. And are you ready to swim and dance in this garden? Whatever it may be for you. But it's limitless and profound, as are you. And so feel free to get us your questions or your, just, your beautiful musings. I'd love to talk with you and entangle with you in your beautiful soul spirit. So you can feel free to create comments or text or um, uh, through Twitter um, <clears throat> if, you, if you so desire to entangle and dance with us this way. 
And so remember, we were talking about the, the beautiful offerings upon Gaia and what I was experiencing in my beautiful travels. And one of the experiences that I had um, upon the land um, in one of the locations that we were at it was very beautiful and again unexpected. We went up to sit on this beautiful grassy knoll that was above um, the valley that we were walking within. And I went up to um, just lay on the land and, and really create a beautiful engagement and ceremony with Gaia just to be with her. And as I laid on the grass and I, as I put my hands, one on the earth and one up to the heavens, and I just sat with my full body being completely open in, um, in honor and of love and, um, and energy. And within moments, I began to feel the resonance of, of Gaia, and I began to feel the resonance of the universe, all entangling as if this beautiful fluid wave of light, wave of energy moving through me, and as if to come right through the, the, the root chakra um, as my tailbone was placed on the earth, and in beautiful waves of light just moving through me in the beautiful essence of creation. And I began to feel myself slipping within this fluid movement of this beautiful wave. And I began to slip into this higher state of consciousness and, and began to create tonal sounds. And as I was doing so, the teams were gifting me with various ways that I could place um, various parts of the throat and the tongue so that I could create those different sounds. And as I was doing so, I was amazed at the frequency in my fields were shifting and changing. I could feel the little clicks and the ticks and all of those things that I feel at a multidimensional level that are allowing those electromagnetic fields of what I exist within, the etheric fields of what I exist within, to change and alter and shift and awaken and be activated. And so this is another example of how just a spontaneous moment to sit down and be with Gaia can turn into something really fluid and beautiful when you're in that God space of just allowance and open and surrender and to intuitively follow and be that playful God essence that you are, which is why... One of the reasons why I created that sacred priestess class and, and priest class, just to come out and play. Because it's in those moments where you're living in that divine sacred heart center and you just say, I just want to play. I have no idea. I have no expectations of what's going to unfold. I'm letting go of it all and I'm just going to play. And you open the door for the unimaginable to come in when you do so. And this is how the new, the new, environment frequencies the new collective frequencies of our our earth will be more and more like people will just gather simultaneously or synchronistically people will just create synchronistically together with one another they will meet synchronistically and create synchronistically and it will be through open hearts and it won't have any plans or restrictions around it it won't be managed or micromanaged or detailed and paperwork and applications and all of those things that we've done in our old world frequencies because that's what we thought we needed and perceived but we can choose to change that you slip into that god self of yours and create within a garden of light and have it be as open as free as you just so desire and it will show itself to you <clears throat> and so there were many um beautiful experiences upon um upon gaia and um, again, there were just so many that um, it's hard to put, you know, in any one show or, or even perhaps in any one book. <laughs> Some of the experiences I'll, I'll put in my next book because my next book I'm sensing will be um, understanding the multidimensional body, the divine inner temple, so that we can truly create as masters and, and as the God self and as the Christ itself. Um, and it's really key um, to, to move and walk with that balance of all that we are so that we're really slipping within um, the fluidity and the essence of what's being offered in these divine communions. But I'll give you an example from that last, um, that last experience that I brought you to. And if for those who so desire, we can create a beautiful, lovely visualization because visualization is again, one of our beautiful creative tools that we each and each and every one of us have. We're encoded with, we're embedded within our DNA. We're encoded with all these beautiful tools in our creative toolkit that we create in the fields of light. We create in the fields of love, in the beautiful matrix and omni field of all that we are. This is the omnipresence that we talk about. Omnipresence means God in all things. And as there is God in all things, so too are you. As within, so without. Who are you, what you exist within, and what exists within you? The omnipresence understanding of that is that in any given moment, you can choose to create with light within this omnipresence. And so allow yourself to be in this beautiful, sacred location of wherever you choose for it to be. It could be on the Pleiades, it could be Sirius, it could be here on Earth. 
And we allow ourselves to create that beautiful soft focus of who we are as a multidimensional being. And we bring soft, gentle focus of who we are as a physical being. And we create the visualization of a beautiful pillar of light that runs through the, the spine of all that we are, that allows the beautiful chakra systems, the vortices, the stories, and the beautiful Akashic frequencies to spin and spiral within all that we are. And the beautiful colors and the re resonance and the vibrations that they spiral with. And we create that loving emanation of who we are as a unique individual of Christed sense, of Christed essence and love. And that beautiful divine sacred heart is the divine partnership that we have with Mother, Father, God, with all that is through our divine sacred heart and opening who we are, the divine in us and tangling with the divine in you. And we allow ourselves to feel the grounding in the marriage and the symbiosis through breath as we ground the feet and all that we are through the sands and soils of Gaia to her very heartbeat, her very core of all that she is. Because as she is, so too are we. And the beautiful sacred breath that has encodings, that has nourishment, that has healings within every breath. And we create that similitude flight and that flow all the way up to our divine sacred mind, our higher self, to the universal mind, the omni field. We create a stillness and a still point at the top of that breath for a new cycle to begin. And a new cycle begins as we exhale, bringing it down through the pillar of light, through our higher self, through our divine sacred heart, through the chakra systems, through the sands and soils, through the very heartbeat of Gaia, and we are one. And Gaia then feeds us her love as we inhale. And this beautiful symbiotic breath of the omnipresence of the all coming down as you exhale, feeding it through your systems of light, through your matrices, through your vortexes, into the sands and soils of Gaia to her heartbeat, and that symbiosis then goes through her heartbeat, mo moving and going fluidly and, and beautifully through her, up through us as a gift. So it's a constant cycle of giving and receiving of energetic frequencies, energetic love, intentions. However, we're now creating it with greater intent and greater consciousness and greater knowing for our desire to be the God self. So as you gently focus your breath with that intention to create that similitude, that symbiosis of relationship with the omni field, the omni presence of all that is, through you, through your chakras, through your divine higher self, through your divine sacred heart, through the pillar of light you ground and you move with intention this beautiful light path of giving and receiving of love. Your breath gives love, your breath receives love, the inhale and the exhale. And allow yourself to be placed upon any sacred land. It could be a rock, it could be on an ocean front, it can be a beautiful grassy knoll, it can be under a beautiful tree in a forest, whatever it is that is your sacred space. And we're going to create from the God self, from the God essence of all that we are, from the very nucleus of where we exist within. And allow yourself to feel your body simply floating and being within this wave of light, this wave of creation, this wave of infinite consciousness as you breathe. And as you feel your body begin to slip within the omnipresence of the all, within the heart of the all, within the tender loving care of Mother, Father, God and all of creation and your teams, allow yourself to experience the expansiveness of all that you are as an expansive soul being in the omniverse. A vast being of light and matrices and webbings. And then allow that focus to drop down to the heart as you create the very smallest particle of essence within the nucleus of a cell. The very smallest particle where the DNA is encoded. And as a beautiful golden particle of light that you are within the DNA, and you're spiraling upon this sacred land, and in your moment of stillness and presence, there becomes a musing, a new excitement, a new stirring to create something new. For you've been through much integration and much healing. You've been through many travels and many paths. And there's something within the soul and the spirit that's saying there's something new waiting for you. And you can be as vast or as small as you so desire, but you can create it and initiate it at any time. And here you sit as a small golden particle within the DNA, an encodation, if you will, of light. 
And the soul self says, you're ready now. You have a beautiful light field. You've released so much and transmuted your beliefs and your patterns. You've allowed the ego to be a part of your manifestation process, but you're guided by spirit every step of the way. Your partnership is in all things. Are you ready for something new? And something within you begins to get excited as you see yourself as this golden spark begin to light up and illuminate from all directions as a shining star spiraling and oscillating, creating an axial spin, if you will, within the cells, within the particles. And as this spin continues to increase in its oscillation and its acceleration of light and love, something comes to the forefront. I have a shamanic skill somewhere, I know I do. And I truly love to heal through my visualizations of light. And as your spin becomes ever so beautiful and loving in the divine hand of Mother, Father, God, you say, I'm ready to create as my God self. And you hand over to creation and you surrender and say, whatever is next for me, I have great excitement to be a light healer. I'm open for anything. I let go of all restrictions. I let go of all limitations. For I'll accept the blessing of whatever is gifted. I'm excited and I'm ready. And I can spin something new in any moment. A new color, a new frequency, a new speed, a new imagining, a new visualization, a new gathering of soul tribe. Anything is possible. And I trust in all that I am, for I've had many travels. I've had many experiences. And for the first time, I feel like I know who I am. But I know there's so much more to know, and that's what excites me. And for the first time, I fall in love. The beautiful God particle of all that I am within that nucleus. The encodations in which I created to be here in co-creation with Mother, Father, God. And in this I am all things. I know all things are possible. And the sacred land support you, for you know that in this marriage, in this union, that it's a giving and receiving of all things. And as you receive, so too shall you gift it back, so that the greater good are served and the benevolency of the all is gifted and sown within all things. And you are supported by the very heartbeat and nourishment of Gaia on the sacred land. And you feel the movement within the vessel and the grander multidimensional body that you can allow yourself to feel. And as your body and your vessel and your emotional field and your mental field and your etheric field and all that you are as a multidimensional being of Christ in light, you feel something new because that particle has sparked the entirety of you through the threading of Gaia, through the threading of the Omniverse, to be entangled as one. And you have no idea what will unfold, and that's okay, it's exciting. For you trust, utterly, the design from the higher self and the soul. You trust the blessings that you've been gifted, for they have been truly divine and miraculous. And how could it be otherwise from here on out? And although there may be change and transformation still to come, you take peace and harmony in your mastery skills to understand and integrate and just allow the love to unfold in a new way. And as that God particle interacts with another God particle within the DNA, within the blood, within the systems, within the organs and the bones and the skin. And the beautiful intentions that you set as a mental being of light. And you create love and excitement as an emotional being of light. And you create physicality in the physical body. And you feel various myriad sensations of the grander aspect of you, the God self of you coming to life. And the etheric field lights up as gold. And the multidimensional God-self of you, so infinite, spiraling in a spin, 
of creation and love. Anything is possible. And so it should be. And you bring yourself gentle focus to the vessel of all that you are. Entangling and dancing with the all that is. And you understand that you're a divine creator here upon these sacred lands. A new energy that's supporting you. And how exciting and fun it would be to just create wild imaginings of excitement and color and light and sound and have the universe return in its most brilliant way. Anything and everything. For you're ready at the heart to open and receive your grandness of how profound you are as a God creator. And your body begins to feel the energy waves and the light of the councils and the groups and the energy frequencies that are with you always. But now it's different because you've allowed yourself to see who you are as a particle of light and information and wisdom and love to the very vast essence that you're threaded within the omniverse. And you know it's all one. And as you are this grand aspect of light, profound and unimaginable, you bring yourself to gentle focus because you can, and you know that you exist on every other realm, every other frequency, every other thread, and you're excited to be alive and start anew in this beautiful garden of light. With all that you hold within, dear ones, you have great wisdom, great insight, you have expansive galactic frequencies spiraling within. You are a divine creator of light. Why limit yourself and make yourself small with restrictions? Go forth and create in love and in light. Go forth with the joy to be all that you are, as unlimited as the higher self knows it to be. For this is part of your mastery integration, is to claim that limitless and potentiality of all things, thought, word, and deed, perceive the limitless. Imagine, dance, create and color the limitless. That is being the God self from the very minute particle or encoding within your DNA that swims within the all, omnipresence of all things that you are one with. And how divine is that? And as we bring ourselves to the soft, gentle focus of who we are as divine, illuminated beings of light, in this new galactic version of human and earth experience. May you be a new expansive aspect of all that you are in a new threading, in a new potential with limitless possibilities, dear ones, and opportunities and synchronicities moving to you through your intentions, through your perceptions of who you are at the most vast frequencies of light, speeds of light, oscillations of light, colors of light, for we are all things in light and love. And how grand we are in this co-creation. And as your physical vessel feels somewhat alive, somewhat new than it did a moment ago, Carry forward these activations of light, these activations of intention to be limitless, to be profound in your skin, to be profound in all that you are. And for the first time, allow yourselves to look in the mirror and embrace and exalt all that you are. And this is symbiosis within spirit, loving and accepting and embracing and being ceremonious in all that you are. And as these frequencies ripple through creation, it will be shown back to you in all ways, through you, for you. And thank you. 
And so how lovely it is to allow ourselves to visualize and play in this way. And this is how I see our collective doing more and more of, because there are so many of us that as we travel upon these sacred lands and as we do continue in our sacred um, light work and our divine passionate work and excitement of energy work and being our true and limitless self, we're finding that we really want to create those ceremonies of really sacred intent and we want to create sacred classes and sacred you know movement and sound and color and it's just really exciting to be in that energy of play again and to really be free without without borders and boundaries as to what we're able to create and so i see this a lot um coming forward um, in many, many um, specific groups to begin with, but just really flowing as a beautiful wave through consciousness to begin creating in new, beautiful, divine ways, in ways that we've never done before, which is what I experienced in Peru. I mean, there was a beautiful moment in which I was doing toning, um, you know, in, in, in some locations, um, and even just finding myself in quiet meditation and just really allowing myself to be that shamanic priestess that I knew was coming forward for me to dance and play with and that tonal goddess that I wanted to experience because I recognized it and remembered it from other lifetimes, like that thread moving through you like a deja vu. Oh, I remember this and I'm going to make this sound right now. It just feels intuitive. It feels natural. It feels free. It feels liberating. I'm going to do it. And you create those beautiful sounds with Gaia and as if you're in a beautiful dance, that beautiful light wave that you're just swimming with now. And it doesn't seem weird or you're not thinking about what others are, are thinking or what they, they might think. or you, All of those restrictions are let go and you're creating as your God self. And so those were experiences that I had personally moved through. And I remember the moment where I just said, I don't care what other people think, I'm going to do what I want to do. <laughs> because it just felt so good you know I was making beautiful beautiful sounds and I was connecting with nature and Gaia and the elementals and the omniverse and I was just in a beautiful energy of light um, and so it was just lovely so I'm sharing that with you so that you too can feel free and liberated and excited to go forward and play in your own way, whether it's with color, whether it's with sound, whether it's with creation, whether it's with Gaia, um, the oceans, the cetaceans. I mean, there's so much for us. I mean, there's energy and frequencies and love and all things, and we're here to truly explore and become expansive in all that we are um, so that we're creating these new human paradigms, the earthly paradigms that we're, that we're being offered right now. And so it's really lovely. So go and play. And, and be playful with yourself and be playful with all those energies that are that are and will open up to you as you travel and be one with Gaia, as you travel and be one with your God self. So the more that you intend that communion and intend that relationship, the more it will show itself to you. And that's just um, that's just allowing yourself to create that open perspective of your omni field, of your omniverse and what you exist within. And really that's all it really is, is just changing our perspective about who we are and what we create within and who we are in the grander whole of all that is. So it's exciting, really exciting. So excited to be here with you. And if there's anybody that has questions in, please feel free to text and get them in. Um, I'm going to go to the etheric chambers right now. We had some lovely energy come forward um, from the etheric chambers today. Um, and the etheric chamber is a, is an energetic, uh, etheric, um, you know, kind of collective gathering um, energy thread, if you will, of where um, any of the universal energies that, that so desire to come forward and entangle with us in any of our weekly gatherings and any of our weekly ascension shows. And they offer their wisdoms. They offer their insights. They offer whatever it is that's coming forward in the moment that we're threading these lovely energies um, and experiences. And today's topic was creating as the God self. And um, some of the energies that came forward were um, similar energies in the collective frequency frequencies that I felt within Peru and some elders and tribe elders came forward today um, one was from an Andean tribe um, an elder from an Andean tribe and it was a it was a divine female elder um, that she came forward and her offering to us um, today in our co-creation as um, the God self is she's allowing us to understand that our co-creations as a collective were within the harmonics of what was always offered through through Terra, through Gaia. Never more, so never more than what she offered, because they didn't want to create that imbalance. They knew that if they took more, if they, 
you know, if they didn't give back or if they didn't um, cultivate the land in honor and in respect, then there would be that imbalance. There would be that energetic imbalance. There would be that physical imbalance. And they knew that. So that's what she was saying. With equal gratitude and honor of all the blessings and light that they were gifted. And they knew that there was cosmic interaction. They knew that they were gifted cosmic wisdoms to create um, um, in energetic ways, in tonal ways, in vibrational ways. And with those honors of frequency, with those honors of insight, just as if we do when we connect with our etheric fields and our higher selves and our celestial teams, we always open it from the divine sacred heart and we honor it. <clears throat> we commune and we move in great reverence. Because it's in this reverence that that, that that portal is opened. That portal of majesty is opened and we, we receive as well as give. And that's how divine creation is. That's how humility and reverence is so very key to your mastery. I mean, it simply must be. <laughs> and this is what humanity is learning on a grander scale. We must be humble and with reverence with Gaia. We must be humble and with reverence with all peoples. And respecting of all peoples because we understand it's us, just as Guy is a mirror to us. And so these are reminders. But the beautiful tribe elder, Apasha, from the Andean tribe, um, it was letting me know that, you know, with equal gratitude and honor for all of the blessings that were gifted, whether it was a beautiful crop, there was honor and blessings and ceremony. Whether it was them giving of their abundant crop to another tribe that perhaps didn't have an abundant crop that year or that season. And there was that sharing, and it was that similitude of balance and that symbiotic relationship back and forth, that giving of receiving, just as we give and receive through breath, all the way through Gaia, all the way up to the omniverse, and through us as the creator, God, source, beings that we are. All things live through us, and that's what breath allows us to experience. For when you take more than you give and the collective and the universal imbalance begins, this is why we also honor cycles in all things. For it is a creation's symbol to us to create balance and restoration of the great cosmic alignments or celestial events or planetary cycles. That's why we're gifted these alignments. That's why we're gifted equinoxes. That's why we're gifted solstices. That's why we're gifted moments of great rain, of cleansing, of, of restoration. There's profound cycles in all things. It allows us that rebalancing. Just as the divine inner temple, we bring that back around and create balance within that. Am I balancing and nourishing my mental body? Am I balancing and nourishing my physical body? Am I balancing and nourishing my etheric? And so on and so on. And where may I create balance? Where may I let go of restriction? Where I may let go of limitation? And where, how may I live as my God self? And so the beautiful elder from the Andean tribe just allowed me to understand and remind myself of the energies I felt upon the, the sacred lands of Peru and how that balance was always gifted, whether it be between the wildlife, between the very three, the three very beautiful symbols that, that many of their myths um, um, move within, the condor and the puma and the snake, and I had my own interpretations from my own lovely energetic experiences that I might talk about in another class. But those symbiotic relationships and the symbols that we hold within all of humanity, within all tribes, within all ancient civilizations, within all star systems, they're symbols of all things. And those symbols tell us stories energetically of where we have sat in any particular timeline or thread of frequency that we're here right now as a collective, as individuals, to move beyond and transcend and heal. And as we do so, as we integrate and heal the grander soul fragments of all that we are, we simultaneously heal the all, and we rebirth our collective into something brand new. That's what's so magical. And I learned that as I let go of the limitations and the restrictions I put around myself with the Light Wisdom School and the timelines and the deadlines. And if I just let that go, then I'm allowing that part of that imprint to be healed. I don't have to move by that imprint anymore. I can choose to change it. I can see myself in a more expansive light. I can love myself and create those healings of safety and nurturance of all that I am as a spirit to create something beautiful and profound. Why not? If the universe knows this of me, then why can't I step into that same knowingness? That's the God essence. For we have been gifted right from day one. Make no mistake about this, dear lighted ones, and if you take anything away from today, this will be it. 
We have been gifted unconditional love and empowerment from the moment that we were conceived in every realm. And the Divine Holy Mother, Father, God, and all of creation know of our profundity. And if this is so, and it is, then how can we also step into this perspective of light and love and profundity? That is creating in the garden of light. And how may you create? How may you give? How may you receive? How may you open and surrender to the all that you are and be stunned and amazed and delighted every step of the way? Because every moment for moment for moment for moment, you're refining and manifesting new things to show yourself about how profound you are. That's the dance. Divine and elegant and gifted in every way. And you're sown within it all. And so the divine elder um, leaves us with saying, there are divine celestial events and planetary cycles. And now that you're awake to this, you can begin to bring balance and homeostasis into the new garden of delight. We celebrate you in ceremony and we celebrate with you. One of the things that I was, um, I was awoken to is my love for ceremony and my love for being a part of um, intention with the land and intention with spirit. And that's why most of our private readings and our classes, they hold some element of initiation, some element of entanglement with the divine in ceremony. Whether it's through a, a pure prayer or an invocation, that's our intention of threading quantumly within the all for gratitude and respect and honor and love. Because I know it will be returned. And it has been over and over and over and over so unconditionally and that's why I'm so impassioned to come forward and offer my my knowings and my gifts and my musings for those who so desire to dance this dance because it truly is a beautiful dance so thank you the elders from the Andean tribe and another elder came forward today tribe elders from all corners um, they they announced themselves because I was given a visualization of um, one of the symbols they have, which is the kachina, um, and it's the, the symbol of um, um, what I was given in my vision was the four, um, the four boxes that symbolized and represented um, all four corners of the earth and all four tribes, if you will, coming together. And this is what true ascension and awakening and unity consciousness is, is that when all four corners of the earth, when all communities and when all 12 tribes, if you will, come together in unity and harmony and respect and sovereignty of one another and thyself, then this is when the collective as a whole moves forth into the gardens of delight, into the gardens of light, into true ascension. Because we've stepped our frequency up as a collective, we have chosen that moment that we're all awake, we're all aware, we're ready to consciously create in this way for the benevolency of the greater good. And we've let go of service to self. Service to self is on your way to the unity consciousness when all that you do is your service to the greater good of all because you understand that it's you. Every step of it, every movement of it, every tribe leader is you. And so the tribe elders came forward and they said of the east, west, south, and north that they recognize their balance in trade, their balance in materials or wisdom or ways of the land or crossing of the land. Because remember that in many of their ceremonial um, practices, they had to move about the land and it would, it would create initiations, it would create energy movements, it would create trade and they would connect with different tribes and different peoples and they would connect with different parts of the land and they were very they were very um they would create these initiations with the land in this way and move and as they did so they were crossing the the the, the so-called boundaries if you will of what we call today boundaries and borders into other other elders tribes and they understood that this was necessary for there were frequencies that they had to move within through their initiations or through their their give and take of trade or of their wisdoms and sharing. And they understood this similitude and this balance. And there may have been disagreements or even frustration with many of the elders between some of their ways of doing things. But there was always that ultimate respect and balance and homeostasis within the, the gathering of their grander understanding of who they were together. They may not have to agree with one of each other's elders' ways of doing things or maybe cultivating land, 
But there was always that respect held that there was that balance within all things that they were required a giving and a taking in a much more balanced and, and, and harmonic way than we do today in, in our times today. But that are changing very dramatically and very quickly because we're letting go again of what we've defined and perceived our structures or our constructs to be. So we can go in an infinite number of cycles saying the same thing. <laughs> but the tribes are telling us that we knew this. This was a part of our way of life. This was a part of what we taught our children. This is a part of our children moving into their adulthood to know that each and every tribe member, each and every being upon earth, as we've said in many of our shows and offerings, have purpose, are required here, have innate DNA skills, have innate DNA activations and gifts and creative sovereignty that they're here to offer as a part of their symbiosis with all of creation. And as they move into their adulthood, what is their understanding of their true purpose? And they come to life to say, well, my purpose is to create beautiful um, shelter. My purpose is to create um, medicine healing with crystals. My, my purpose is whatever their purpose they came to explore and experience. They were told from the very beginning that they had an innate purpose and a, and, and a requirement and that it, it was required to create that balance of the entire collective. Which is what these elders have come forward to say. It didn't matter whether they're in the north or the south or the east or the west. All beings, all essence of life, all factions of life were required in this balance, in the harmony. And why they sustained themselves for so very long. In such a high vibrational manner. And from what I'm sensing, they had a very high vibrational way of living. Very high vibrational way of living from the structures that they helped co-create and they co-created with one another. There has to be <laughs> to experience that type of vibrational um, profundity in, in the construction, in the, in the design, in the, you know, I mean, there's just, there's just no other explanation other than divine orchestration. And so that's my sensing as the dynamic understanding of balance. The divine female and male balance of all things, the divine inner temple of all things, understanding who you are as a multidimensional being of all things, how you're woven and intricately threaded with all tribes, with all countries, with all beings, with all things. And how that sovereign allowance and that sovereign creativity that you gift and as you allow, you're also gift and you're receiving as well in that sovereignty. You're allowed to create as you so desire and be that beautiful, expressive, Christed being that you are. And so as you can see, it's really taken my understanding of who I was as a universal being, as a universal being of light. And I've awoken to a much more expansive and vast understanding based on the consciousness information and wisdoms from the portals, from the, from the vortices, from the sacred land, from the sacred rocks. Um, we've had consciousness um, come forward in many of our shows from the rock consciousness. But this was in a, that a whole other... Um, it was a whole other collective of rock consciousness on a, on a grander collective scale. And it was so beautiful to experience and, and, and be a part of. And that's where the reverence and humility comes forward so that I grace um, the energies right back to Gaia, right back to the rock consciousness, right back to the beautiful, the Elohim and the creative, um, the Devic communities um, for bringing those frequencies through me. And so I'm very, very blessed and very grateful to be a part of that and how I grow as a master in that reverence and humility to be a conduit and a portal for that multidimensional communication so that I can then teach and explore and express with others who so desire to swim in this divine way. And so um, she, uh, they, the tribe elders end with saying that even though there were frustrations, we, there was always ceremony to celebrate and honor the coming together so that the maintaining of balance can be, can be continued and sustained for long periods of time. And they knew that. They, they knew that innately. They knew that their wisdoms were coming from, from, from other entities and that it was a threading. It was a requirement that they give back as well. And it's a beautiful... It's a beautiful frequency to be reminded of. And so, I, again, I was just very grateful for the experience. The councils of masters came forward today, which was um, a beautiful emanation that I've opened up to. 
Um, we are pleased to see that so many of you masters that have returned in your own right to claim a new birthright, that you are now sensing the freedom of play that you truly have before you. So many masters have come forward in this lifetime to, to bring forward the gifts that we're so excited about, the, to bring forward the understandings and the remembrances of what we know about plants, about what we know about the vibrations of our earth, about what we know about the vibrations of our oceans, about the intelligence of the cetaceans, about the intelligence of all wildlife and how they teach us through their symbiotic movement of nature and how they've had to adapt because of our imbalances and how we're constantly being offered wisdoms and insights through every aspect of life for us to step up our frequency and our entanglement with and take ownership of and rebalance and heal and give back. See these beautiful cycles? It's just constant and infinite. And they're saying that we were, there's many of us now that are coming forward and just it doesn't matter what the restrictions we thought we had, we're just going to play now. And that's how I feel. I just want to play. I want to make sounds. I want to dance. I want to sing. I want to move. I want to get entangled with energy in the highest form and frequency that I can because I'm just so excited. And I don't, I'm letting go of the restrictions I held over myself. Well, what if people think it's too loud? What if people think this? What if people think I'm letting that go because it was really too much for me to carry? And I was worrying about things that didn't exist. Because if I'm okay with who I am, and if I'm living within my God essence, I'm living within my God Christ itself, then so too will everyone else be. And that's just the mirror reflection of our reality and what we choose to perceive who we are and what we exist within. And so the masters come forward to kind of emulate that for us. That create in joy and bliss to be one with all creation. And when you create in this manner, when I go forward and say I'm one with creation, I'm going to create in this way, I'm just going to open my... I'm just going to open the heart of all that I am and whatever tones come out are going to be synchronistically and intuitively what's required. And I'm not going to doubt and judge myself. And I move into that shamanic essence. I move into that priestess that I've come forward in this lifetime to bring forward and begin new frequencies of light within the grids, new frequencies of information and crystallize information that I never knew I had. And that's what these portals do. These portals and these intentions that you set for yourself in your own divine pacing bring the information from the DNA, bring the information from the omni field, the unseen, the majesty of the unseen, and brings it through you. That's living through your God self. Because you're crystallizing information, you're making it real, you're materializing it, you're being reverent and, and benevolent with it and, and honorable with it and ceremonious with it. And that's the key. And that's a continual cycle that you continue to learn and give and gift and learn and give and gift. And it's just endless and infinite and it's magical. And so they're saying many of your mastery gifts are going to be sparked and activated for you to begin something new. You're going to be advanced in your exploration in your human journey because we're going to know where we want to go and we're not going to intuitively guess it. We're just going to be there where we need to be and those gifts will unfold. They'll be activated within the DNA. They'll be activated within the all that we are. So expand within your benevolence, expand within your love and your balance to sustain all that you are in a balanced and homeostasis way. And remember that when we move about our planet, that I'm one with the all. I'm creating balance. I'm creating light. I'm giving back to God. I'm giving back to creation and how you are receiving as well through your energy fields. Because every time you give something out, you're receiving back. Sometimes we just may not see it until it arrives to us in the physical, but we're still manifesting. We're still gifting and receiving. It's just that we've relied so much on the physical. We've relied so much on what we can see. But there's so much more going on that we just can't see. And we have to trust that in the omni field and the universe. And Mother, Father, God will present something in the most highest and divine manner. And I trust that. Um, I've experienced it and it's just divine. So how we perceive ourselves is at the core to what and why we experience what we do. So if I perceive myself in a limited way, then that's my reality experience. So I'm letting go of restriction. I'm letting go of all these things I thought I needed for requirement. Um, you know, all of those restrictions I gave myself and I'm letting that go. What do you know about yourself to be and what you exist within? Again, who are you and what you exist within? And be unlimited. Be limitless. And that's who you are. So in that, dear lighted ones, we thank the universal chambers. We th th thank the etheric chambers. We thank Mother, Father, God, and Gaia. 
the beautiful frequencies of Gaia that run right to her very core in the loving emanations of all that we are as a human family coming to life in a new way, coming to light in a new way for us to create and co-create as one, as a human family in harmony so that we are preparing ourselves in every way for higher galactic um higher galactic journeys and higher galactic sacred journeys where we're not traveling to not only the sacred lands of Gaia, but we're traveling to sacred lands within the Pleiades, within Sirius, or within the Arcturus systems. So we're really expanding ourselves in beautiful ways, and, and these lessons are very key um, to integrate and very key to, to muse about, about where it fits for us and feel into our own experiences about who we think we are in the grander scheme of all things and why we manifest what we do. And allow it to be the lesson in love of all things, because that's truly why we're here. Create new lessons of love and expansiveness as a human family. And how profound is that? Well, I feel really wonderful after being um, away for three weeks. So thank you so much again for tuning in, as we always do um, every week. Next week, we're going to be um, have a special guest with us. And we're going to talk a little bit about, um, I'm not sure what, because we'll let that be, whatever it is. <laughs> but we are going to have a special guest on next week. Um, and then don't forget, July 1st is our first um, Sacred Temple Priest and Priestess class. We're going to play um, in any way that um, our intuition drives us and, and allows us to explore. And we once again thank the hierarchies of the heavens and all of the beautiful beings around the universe that support us in our refinements of our physical body, our mental body, our etheric body, and our emotional body, um, all of the work that we have been uh, moving within our refinements as an ascending human on an ascending planet. So thank you so much to all beings of all consciousness. Thank you. And this is Joanna for signing out from Universal Unity Today and Universal Light Wisdom and Healing Centers. Um, tune in um, week for week, um, our Facebook, Twitter, Google, Tumblr, and um, our Crystalline Children's blog um, blog on the, on the blogspot.ca, um, I think, or blogger. You'll find us there. Anyways, all the links are there. We've got our book number two, um, our third edition out, and we're just um, finishing touches on book number three. So thank you so much, everyone. We're sending you love. We're sending you light. Tune into our um, website for all of the updates on classes and our, um, our global live events as we dance with the divine. Thank you so much. This is Joanna tuning out for today. Namaste, dear ones. You've been listening to Universal Unity, New Earth Consciousness with Joanna L. Ross. Live every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. To explore, empower, understand, inspire, and further connect with this higher state of consciousness, please visit universalunity.ca. For more information on the host, Joanna L. Ross, please visit her KCOR Digital Radio Network show page, Universal Unity, New Earth Consciousness. You're listening to the all-new KCOR, The Core, broadcasting from Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. Hell yeah, in a little place called Area 51.